Can you hear RAM? Honest question, are you able to hear the noises that your memory makes when you put data into the memory and take data out? Now, I thought the answer was no, but a researcher recently found a way that you can listen to the electrical signals that your RAM makes and use that to covertly extract data out of a computer. In this video, we're talking about the Rambo attack, a new attack that is truly insane. They're using electrical signals that are created by the RAM to sneak data out of a network they don't have direct access to. Let's talk about it right now. Before we do, if you're new here, hi, my name is Ed. This is The Love of Learning, a channel where I talk about cybersecurity, software security, a bunch of other cool stuff. So if you like that stuff or just want to hang out, hit that sub button. This technique is called the Rambo attack, radiation for air-gapped memory bus for offense. Kind of a backronym, I think. They probably chose Rambo and then decided to call it this. Um, but basically, this research is put out by this guy named Dr. Mordechai Guri. If I'm butchering your name, man, I'm so sorry. This guy is a world-class gray beard gigachad hacker that runs this website here called covertchannels.com. He actually runs an entire research lab that does exclusively research on jumping air gaps. If you don't know what an air gap is, um, imagine you have a network where you do really sensitive research, like maybe you're Riot Games and you're working on your MMO and you refuse to let every, anyone know how little work you've done so far. So you don't wanna let hackers into your network. So effectively, you cut all the cables so no one can get into your network. Like you don't put a switch, you don't put a firewall, you truly don't connect it to anything. He actually runs an entire research lab that does air gap research exclusively. And it's not just like one or two techniques. This guy has, since like 2018, figured out how to use basically anything to extract data out of an air gap network. Like this one, for example, obviously GPU fan, leaking sensitive data from air gap machines via covert noise from your GPU fan. Or Satan, <laughs> air gap exfiltration attack via radio signals from your SATA cables, which are those cables that connect your hard drive to your computer. It's like, okay, like things that I would have never thought that someone could pull data off of, uh, but this guy has. So in this new concoction, this new brainchild that he's come up with, uh, he figured out a way to, via an air-gapped workstation that has malware previously put into it, to use a custom piece of malware that somebody evil put into this air-gapped network, and they're able to, by writing to RAM in a particular sequence, create enough electrical noise off of the RAM, which is just another piece of electronics, just like the GPU fan, or the buzzer or the LED that will make electrical noise. When you write data to a piece of RAM, at the end of the day, all you're doing is turning an electrical signal on and off. And because there is no perfect way to do that without putting something into the ether, into the, you know, the universe, um, someone else outside of that environment can hear it. And by transmitting data through these means, they're able to actually transmit at about a thousand bits per second on a 3.6 gigahertz CPU, which is truly amazing. I mean, for over the air, unintentional networking, that is better than some of the original networking that was done like at the, you know, early onset of the internet. So like, it's just, it's, it's truly amazing. It's such a, a novel and unique way of thinking about data transmission because he's able to use an RF modulation scheme by sending data to the RAM in a certain sequence to transmit this picture of Optimus Prime across the air into this machine. And he uses a little software defined radio. This one's my Blade RF by Newend, not, not sponsored, but hit me up. They run a special program on here that can smell or hear the RAM signals uh, and take this picture down off of the air, which is truly insane. Now, I personally had a couple questions about how this worked, and I wanna go into the paper a little bit to talk about. Now, when I go through these papers, all I'm trying to do is make the work a little more digestible for potentially the non-technical, the less technical person. And I am gonna turn off Dark Reader, so watch your eyes. Ah, okay. Um, so this here is a graph of the data over time, and the data itself is just the amplitude of the signal that the RAM is putting out, right? So my first question was, how are they able to control exactly when the signal goes off, right? Because in my head, I was like, oh, if you write to RAM once, you know, you're gonna put out a little bit of EMF, a little bit of electromagnetic frequency, but that happens all the time in computers. So how are they able to differentiate themselves? What they actually do in their algorithm here is they decide how long they want in seconds one bit to be, and they just scream over the air by writing to the RAM over and over and over again, right? So this amplitude here is them just consistently writing to RAM over and over again, and that causes the data to go over the air. And then when they wanna to go to a zero or you know they wanna turn off the signal, they just stop writing. And then the average noise floor, right? Somewhere at about like 55 decibels, they're able to say that's where our data. And then my other question was, wait a minute, how are they how are they writing directly to RAM? Like there's, there's an entire 
world of research called CPU cache where cores when you're doing computing don't actually write to RAM, right? That'd be extremely slow. RAM is fast, but not as fast as L1, L2, and L3 cache, right? These systems of memory exist for data that is going to be used over and over again. So instead of writing it to RAM, which takes a little more time, you can have it in this really hyper fast L1, L2, L3 memory cache inside the CPU core. Now, what I didn't realize is they use not only the move instruction in ARM, they use the move NTI instruction. And I had to do some research to figure out what this was. And I'm gonna turn dark reader back on because I'm going blind here. Move NTI is store double word, which just means write to memory using non temporal hint. And all that means in layman's terms is move to memory, but completely skip the cache. It is literally a direct write to RAM without using any of the cache layers. So they're able to directly create this algorithm where they're emitting these signals on demand and thus putting the image out into the air and being able to pick up the traffic. Now in this table, what they're doing is they're demonstrating how long it takes to download certain kinds of information, right? And this T value here is going to be how long is a single bit. If you make your single bit too short, you introduce more noise and could cause errors in your data. If you make your bit time longer, there is less noise, but there's also more more time in between bits and therefore slower transmissions. But via this method, they were able to prove that they could emit a 4096-bit RSA private key in anywhere from 40 to four seconds. They could download a password in just a couple seconds and they could pull down an entire text document at you know 40K, not huge, but not small either, in just under a minute. And again, this is all over the air just by shooting electrical signals into the RAM, truly amazing. And what's honestly even scarier about this is they effectively say in the paper, the only way to get around this attack, to be invulnerable to this attack, um, is to work in a shielded room or to put your compute in a Faraday cage, which I I am not doing that right now. So very interesting work. Another another kind of funny countermeasure they talked about is internal RAM jamming, which literally like to bypass the fact that your RAM makes noise, they offer, yeah, let's fucking make more noise. Like just randomly use a user or kernel thread to interfere with memory and performing read-write operations. Now, this main approach has a main disadvantage of interfering with legitimate memory activities. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a good one. Or even better, uh, it is possible to defend against this by using a radio jammer. So put your computer in a Faraday cage and then also have a bunch of other RF noise so no one can hear you above the noise floor. So there, there you go. Just do, just jam your RAM and then and ram ram your jam and that's all you gotta do anyway guys that's it for now thanks for watching do me a favor go check out this guy's research go read his paper go share it on socials and then i will see you in the next video over here nope it's over this way about something that i think you'll enjoy just as much we'll see you there